When you hear the word gunpowder, your mind probably jumps to the classic black smoky substance used in cannons and muskets throughout history. But if you've ever seen a modern firearm in action, you might notice something very different. There's hardly any smoke at all. That's because today's ammunition doesn't use traditional gunpowder. It uses what's known as smokeless gunpowder. Despite the name, it's not completely smoke-free, but it produces far less residue than its historical predecessor. So what exactly is smokeless gunpowder? And how did it revolutionize firearms, ammunition, and warfare as we know it? Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. To understand smokeless gunpowder, we first need to look back at its smoky ancestor, black powder. For centuries, black powder was the go-to propellant for guns, cannons, and explosives. It was made from three key ingredients, potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur. When ignited, this mixture created a powerful explosion that propelled a bullet or cannonball forward. But there was a problem. Black powder was incredibly dirty. It produced thick clouds of smoke that could obscure a battlefield or give away a shooter's position. It also left behind a corrosive residue that could foul the barrel of a gun, making it harder to clean and causing damage over time. Soldiers would often have to stop and clean their weapons frequently just to keep them functional. Clearly, there was room for improvement. That improvement came in the late 19th century with the invention of smokeless powder. The key difference lies in its chemistry. Unlike black powder, which burns by rapidly oxidizing solid ingredients, smokeless powder is based on nitrocellulose, a highly flammable compound derived from cellulose, the same material found in plants and cotton. By treating cellulose with a mix of nitric and sulfuric acids, chemists were able to create an explosive material that released far more energy while producing minimal smoke. This chemical innovation changed everything about how firearms worked. The first successful version of smokeless powder appeared in the 1880s. A French chemist named Paul Vier developed a formulation he called Poudre B, short for Poudre Blanche, or white powder, to distinguish it from traditional black powder. His invention was groundbreaking. It was about three times as powerful as black powder and produced almost no smoke. Soon, other nations followed. The British created cordite, which combined nitrocellulose with nitroglycerin, another powerful explosive. The Germans, meanwhile, came up with ballastite, developed by the famous inventor Alfred Nobel, the same man behind dynamite. These advancements ushered in a new era of firearm technology, leading to faster bullets, longer ranges, and more reliable weapons. Now, despite its name, smokeless gunpowder isn't really a powder in the traditional sense. It's often found in the form of small flakes, rods, or even tiny cylinders, all depending on how it's manufactured. The shape and size of these grains play a crucial role in how quickly the powder burns, which directly affects how much pressure is created inside a gun's chamber. A slower burning powder might be ideal for large rifle cartridges, allowing for a sustained push on the bullet, while faster burning powders work better in handguns where the barrel is shorter and the explosion needs to happen more quickly. Chemically, smokeless powder can be divided into two main categories, single base and double base powders. Single base powders are made mostly from nitrocellulose, while double base powders contain both nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin. The addition of nitroglycerin makes the powder burn hotter and faster, which increases muzzle velocity, but can also create more wear on the firearm over time. 
Some formulations even go further, adding stabilizers, plasticizers, and other chemicals to improve performance or shelf life. These modern powders are carefully engineered to balance power, consistency, and safety. Speaking of safety, smokeless powder is much less sensitive to shock and friction than black powder. It won't just explode from being dropped or jarred, it requires a primer's ignition to start burning. However, once ignited, it burns rapidly and generates a tremendous amount of gas. This expanding gas is what propels the bullet out of the barrel at high speed. Interestingly, smokeless powder doesn't technically explode inside the gun, instead it deflagrates, a controlled rapid burn that releases energy in a split second. This distinction between deflagration and detonation is critical in firearm safety and design. The benefits of smokeless gunpowder go far beyond just cleaner shooting. It made firearms more efficient, allowing for smaller cartridges with higher power. It also drastically reduced the visibility of a shooter's position, especially important in military combat. Imagine the difference on a battlefield. With black powder, every shot would create a thick cloud of smoke, revealing troop positions instantly. With smokeless powder, soldiers could fire multiple times without revealing themselves or being blinded by their own gunfire. It's no exaggeration to say that this chemical innovation completely transformed modern warfare. However, Smokeless powder is not without its challenges. Over time, the chemicals inside can degrade, especially when exposed to heat, moisture, or sunlight. This degradation can make the powder unstable, potentially leading to misfires or dangerous overpressure situations. That's why proper storage in a cool, dry environment is critical for anyone handling ammunition or reloading cartridges. So while the term smokeless gunpowder might sound like a simple improvement over black powder, it represents one of the biggest leaps in weapons technology. It's a product of chemistry, engineering, and innovation that shaped not just firearms, but also the course of history. The invention of smokeless powder paved the way for modern rifles, automatic weapons, and even artillery all operating with far greater efficiency and precision than their smoky ancestors ever could. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.